Welcome back to another episode of Off Night Radio. I'm your host, Model. This episode is being brought to you by SR Now Media. I'm here to give you my week two NFL predictions. But before we get into that, we've got a host of other things to get into. Let's start with my huge health tips.com sports headlines. Be healthy, be informed. Demarcus Lawrence will be out for six. The Demar- Dallas Cowboys, Demarcus Lawrence, will be out for six to eight weeks with a broken foot he suffered in the Thursday night opening game. Um, uh, sorry to see that for the, the Cowboys. That the Cowboys defense didn't look so bad um, against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They're going to miss Demarcus Lawrence. The Washington Redskins beat the New York Giants with a last-second field goal after an offside penalty got them to um, kick another kick, and they eventually won the game. Um, big divisional game. The Washington Washington football team is now 1-1 one and one on the season. Giants go to 0-2. John Wall has requested that he wants to be traded from the Rockets and has $91.7 million left on his contract. And the Houston Rockets and John Wall mutually agree to uh, find him a trading partner for a team for him to play on. That's not the Houston Rockets. Good luck with that. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, the 2023 MLB All-Star Game has a home. It will take place at Seattle at T-Mobile Field. Beautiful ballpark. Seattle's a beautiful town. Um, can't wait to that 2023 All-Star Game. And last but not least, Ryan Braun has officially retired from, from Major League Baseball as a player. I want to emphasize that. After 14 seasons, he leaves the all-time home run leader of the Milwaukee Brewers. I'll be right back after this message. I talked about John Wall, my main topics. Check this out. John Wall can possibly, um, again, John Wall and the Houston Rockets have mutually agreed to part ways, and um, each one to go to another team. Now, I think the pickings are slim. I don't know, but too many teams, too many teams, too many contending teams that can afford to take on $91 million salary over the next two seasons and also give back uh, salary, give back equal salary back to the Houston Rockets or for that a player that they actually want to keep in exchange for John Wall. I love John Wall. I think he's one of the fastest guys with the basketball that I've ever seen. Um, I, I want to see him get back to, you know, averaging 20, 24 points a game. Eight, nine assists a game. I think he still has that in him. But the NBA, the economy of the NBA right now, I think him, John Wall going to the Clippers, I think upgrades the Clippers. And I think he, he'll be a perfect fit over there. Now, I don't know if the money makes sense. What do the Clippers got to give up in order to get him? will be interesting. Then I thought about the Celtics. Then I said, okay, what are the Celtics going to give up? They just gave Marcus Smart um, a healthy contract. So what do they have to give up? in order to get John Wall. John Wall, I think he would make the Celtics a better team, a better club. Um, no no shade to Kimball Walker, but the Kimball Walker just wasn't a good fit. The Kimball Walker and the Celtics just wasn't a good fit for that for that team, or for or for Kimball Walker, and he could stay healthy. So, but I'm hopeful John Wall can land in a spot where he can be a contender for an NBA team and possibly get back in the playoffs and get, get his career back on track to that Hall of Fame track that it was on. Um, I want to talk about Matt Nagy, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, I think Matt Nagy, Matt Nagy is probably on the binge of getting fired this season. Let's look, let's look at it. The last the last two years, he's been, he's been on the team since two thousand. He's been the head coach of the uh, Chicago Bears since two thousand eighteen. That inaugural season, he went twelve and four, went to the playoffs, lost to the Eagles in the divisional round with a against, with a field goal, I believe. If I'm not mistaken. Then they went eight and eight the next season. They they, they failed to miss they missed the playoffs altogether. Then last season, 2020 season, they went eight and eight again, but they made the playoffs and they lost in the first round. He has a 28 and 20 run record as the head coach of the Chicago Bears. They drafted Justin Fields. They signed Andy Dalton. Matt Nagy decided to go with Andy Dalton as the starting quarterback. The fan base, um, other NFL aficionados, other NFL analysts, are saying, "Yo, why did, why are they not putting Justin Fields?" In the game. And I'm looking at this and I'm going, you know, Matt Nagy may be one of the guys that think he's the smartest guy in the room when it comes to football. He may think he's the smartest guy in the room, period. He thinks that this is the best team, best thing to do for the Chicago Bears. Ladies and gentlemen, I think it's inevitable that Justin Fields, I, I saw how Andy Dalton looked. He looked terrible. He looked, first of all, Andy Dalton looked terrible when he was backing up Dak Prescott for the Cowboys. Andy Dalton looked terrible. And for, for them to bring him in and then to, to put him over um, Justin Fields, if anything, I, I let Justin Fields fly day one, and I used the veteranship of Andy Dalton to back him up just in case I got to go to Andy Dalton, just in case it's a nightmare. That's how I would have been thinking. But um, 
if the Bears don't do anything, and they're, and I'm not, they're not projected to. If the Bears don't do anything this season, I can see the Chicago Bears um, cutting ties with uh, Matt Nagy as their co- head coach going forward. I think he's on the verge of Benjamin getting fired. I really, really do. And he might get an offensive coordinator job somewhere after he gets fired, but I think his, his days in Chicago may be numbered. I, I really, really think that. And you'll hear from me again after a word from my sponsor. All right, let's get into my week two NFL picks. Let's run right on through them. Ladies and gentlemen, I got the Broncos over the Jaguars. Broncos defense looked pretty damn good for me. I, Jaguars didn't look good at all. Um, Trevor Lawrence is looking like, you know, he's looking a little shaky. Uh, so we'll see what happens. I got the Buffalo Bills bouncing back, beating their division foe, the uh, Miami Dolphins. I have the Cleveland Browns taking care of their business, getting back in the win column over the Texans. I have the Cincinnati Bengals taking care of the Bears. We talked about Matt Nagy. Probably going to be 0-2. I have the 49ers over the uh, uh, over the Eagles um, at, at at Philadelphia, I might add. I have the New Orleans Saints over the Carolina Panthers. Wasn't impressed with the Panthers, even though they beat, beat up on my Jets. Wasn't too impressed with it. I think the Saints win that game. Um, Los Angeles Rams versus the over over the uh, Indianapolis Colts. This was a pick em game. This might be one of the best matchups the week. Maybe the hardest matchup to bet on. But I'm taking the Rams to win this to win this game over the Colts. Pittsburgh Steelers. I got the Pittsburgh Steelers beating the, the Las Vegas Raiders, um, bringing the Raiders back off their high horse and so forth. Uh, I have the Tampa Bay Bucks beating up on the Falcons. The Falcons' defense looked terrible. Credit to the Eagles' offense. They were pretty damn good, but they could do nothing offensively against that Eagles' defense. A pretty young Eagles' defense, I might add. I have the Vikings over the Cardinals. I have the Dallas Cowboys over the Los Angeles Chargers. I have the Tennessee Titans over. It's upset over the Seattle Seahawks. I have the Kansas City Chiefs taking care of the Baltimore Ravens. Lamar Jackson's 0-3 against Patrick Mahomes. I think he's 0-4 after this week. I have the Packers on Monday night taking care of the Lions, getting back on track, back on their playoff track as they were. Um, time to get into my premium bet presented to you by Avalo Coffee. If you have a gambling problem, please call 1-800-GAMMA. Avalo Coffee also offers the problem promises to offer the premium experience. Got to gloat a little bit. Ladies and gentlemen, last week, I picked Iowa to beat Iowa State. Iowa was an underdog, plus plus 170 on the money line, and they won. They won 27-17. They beat them by 10. So I think you, you I think you would have got, uh, you would have covered the spread if you would have bet on the spread as well. So just want to make sure you guys know that these bets are coming through. Now, I have the Cowboys beating, another upset, I have the Cowboys beating the Los Angeles Chargers in Los Angeles at SoFi Stadium. Cowboys are plus 145. That means you bet 100, you win 145, and your payout is about 245. I think the Cowboys are going to take care of business. Even with their injuries, even with that loss, Dak Prescott's looked pretty damn good. I'm over them out of here, man. Make sure you guys rate, subscribe, and review on whatever platform you listen to this podcast on. That will be greatly, greatly, greatly appreciated. Um, see you guys in week three. Uh, we got to talk about some more NFL picks, some more NFL things, some more sports topics. I'm out of here, man.